Welcome to puzzle solving number 5. In this series, the video is divided in three stages. Number 1, evaluation of the puzzle. Number 2, calculation. So calculating move by move, we usually use the strategy of candidate moves. And number 3, a little bit of a summary to just digest all the key learning notes of, of the video. Let's go. Okay, so we're thrown into this position. I have never seen this before, other than when I was trying to record this five seconds ago. And um, we're, we're, we're playing with the black pieces, which is something that pretty tricky to know, first of all, because it looks like we're, we're white and our pawns are coming this way. That looks pretty natural. But believe it or not, we're black because, yeah, it's our move and h8 is here. So that's the first thing. Um, we're going to evaluate, as I, as I pointed out in the intro. Evaluation is a, a couple of things. You can evaluate uh, material. So, which so far is equal if we have three 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 against three and the rook we can evaluate activity we can evaluate king safety we can evaluate pawn, pawn structure or well in this case passers uh, who, who has a pass pawn and stuff like that so for example let's start evaluating with king safety i think our king is pretty safe that king is well a little bit more open maybe it's more likely to get checked if, if a queen promotes but i don't think that's going to be a high priority so we're going to skip that king safety i don't think is going to be such a big deal um material balance of course is not uh, it's okay it's 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 equal i don't think it's it's a big big priority so far i think what is a big very big priority is that our pawn on b2 if it wasn't pinned it could already promote to b1 so i think that's going to be one of the highest priorities in this puzzle now once we've evaluated once we've got a little bit of context and we can we, we can work on on a calculation it's going to be easier that's a fact so candidate moves is making a list of the most forcing moves you see uh, normally you want your candidate moves to uh, create threats to give checks to capture so for example in this position I, I i would never consider something like this as crazy as it looks okay it's not a check it's not capturing it's not creating a threat either so you would think that when chess players are looking at a position, it's actually pretty difficult. It's like, wow, so many possibilities. But in fact, chess players or very good chess players, what they do is they just look at like four moves. And the reason is most of the moves in the chess position are incredibly bad. So um, yeah, this one, this one, this one already, like I can, I can give an example. Those moves I would never think of. Uh, I would only look at checks and captures and Maybe if that doesn't work, maybe I'm going to look at these. But so far, I think my first candidate move is going to be something like rook f8. Second candidate move is something moving the king somewhere. So maybe one of these three squares. And uh, well, that technically counts as two, three, four candidate moves so far. And um, I think that's good enough. I don't see any other candidate move. Uh, I could play the rook h8. Maybe stopping the pawn is important. I'm going to start with check. So this is the calculation part of, of, of this video. Rook f8 check. What is white going to play? White has so many options. One of them I can eliminate because after this I check and after that I promote. And even though white does promote, I promote it first and there's some checkmate with, with, with the queen, even probably a faster one. But after that, the problem is that white doesn't have to go to e3, white can go to e5. And uh, that, that ruins all this, all this rook f8 idea. Maybe in the future, if I consider rook h8, maybe I can make the inclusion of something like that. So that's that's what we call motives in chess. Um, and I think, in my opinion, that's the creative side of chess. Maybe 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 this is going to be important, and and having that in your mind at the back of your mind is going to be useful for you when you're calculating other variations. So so far, rook f8 doesn't seem very very useful. Rook h8 does intend to i guess prepare king a1 and b1 but i think king a1 is more direct or king a3 so let's say king a1 for now let's say white checks i'm just going to promote takes takes and this rook is going to control these two passed pawns and uh, i'm gonna win so i think after king a1 of course white has to play something pretty pretty forcing that being probably h8 um but if h8 i take i take aha uh -huh, but if i promote now there's a check and I'm losing because after king b2, I'm losing the queen. And this guy promotes. So king a1 promotes. If I take sake, we're losing. So that makes me believe maybe. Maybe. But it's the same thing with king a3 actually. h8 takes, takes. And b1 also loses. 
King b3 also loses because h8 takes, takes. b1, rook b8 is, is winning there. Hmm. Okay, if white's threat is to play h8, now what I'm doing is I'm asking myself, if it was, if it was white to play again, what would white play? And probably h8 is the only counterplay white has. So h8 takes, takes. How can I, how can I do something with that? That makes me believe that rook h8 is a serious candidate move now. Uh, out of the, all the candidate moves at the beginning, it's maybe the most serious. I'm also thinking about e3 now, which is a new candidate move. So for instance, e3, let's say h8 takes, takes. Um, in that position, I don't want to promote. The same trick is there. But I'm going to play something like e2. Now if something like rook e2, then I think I can promote. But there's also this rook h1 line. So after e3 h8 takes takes e2 rook h1 in that position if i promote rook takes king takes c7 e1 queen c8 queen that seems like a draw even though we get a, a, a pawn that's probably a draw right most most queen end games are drawn even though we have an extra pawn so I'm going to I'm going I'm not going to reject that line maybe if no, nothing else works I would go for that but for now I want to try rook h8 because what's what's white going to play c7 if c7 maybe we get a ooh we get a better better, better version of the other king a1 idea so for example rook h8 we play king a1 sorry uh, yeah rook h8 c7 king a1 c8 which is the idea rook takes c8 h8 we take take we play b1 queen, hope you can follow this, rook a8 check, king b2, rook b8, king c2, rook takes queen, king takes queen, and now there's no opponent here, and we have these, this, this kind of scheme and this structure, this pawn is defending the, the past pawn, black, white will never be able to take this one, so we win, that's a winning, that's a winning um, position. So if I play rook h8, it seems like white is a little bit stuck, so I'm going to play rook h8, there we go, it's correct move. White plays c7 as we expected, and now I guess the question is, king a1 is what we were talking about. But what if king a3, what's the difference? Or king b3, for example. Is there a big difference? Normally with these puzzles, there, there must be. For example, king a3, let's say rook h1. Seems a little bit difficult to win as black. Um, so my guess is something like king a1. If rook h1, we promote and we win, because after takes, takes... Once again, this rook is protecting the whole fifth, uh, eighth rank, all the both the promoting squares for the pawn. So these two pawns are frozen, and we're gonna win because of this, um, this setup. So I think king a1 is correct. Yeah, and white plays rook c2. If c8, I think this is winning for black after takes h8 takes takes, and we just promote. And even though white gets rook h8 followed by rook b8 and taking the queen, we're winning because of this setup. The rook c2 is tried, which is something that we didn't see. But nothing, nothing to worry about, because I think we can promote now. And if c8, which I suspect is the whole idea. We have all sorts of move, I think, but we can take and give a check, and eventually probably this is going to fall. Uh, however, I think I have to be strict with myself and, and think, well, try to, try to make an extra effort to try to find a resource for my opponent. Or, or make an effort to, to, to see if this is truly winning. So, let's see. Promote? Promotion is my first candidate move because it's a very forcing move. After c8, let's say I take, take. Let's calculate a little bit further. Queen of one check, king e5. All of a sudden, I don't, I don't have any more checks. And that's a little bit worrying. It's a little bit worrying. But funnily enough, look at this. I could play this. Once again, blocking the, queen, the pawn. And if h8, then I take this take and we get to a similar position um so rook c8 let's say rook h2 now now we promote and this time this is winning because after takes 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 queen c1 so this is the importance of candidate moves b1 seems to be winning because it's promoting a queen and we, we're very impulsive we just want a queen but after c8 rook takes c1 rook takes sorry rook takes c8 rook takes c8 our queen from b1 cannot go Anywhere that takes this h7, we can't force to take this h7 pawn, and it's kind of blocked. We can't like yeah, it's 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 blocked. Also, rook a8 is a, is a forcing move. So for example, rook e3, rook a8 would lose. I'm gonna play rook c8. It's correct. And after rook c5, I think finally we can promote b1. 
if rook a5 king b2 you get my queen but this rook once again is protecting both both of the promoting pawns i think we can now finally promote and that is the answer of the puzzle wow okay let's do a summary now so oh my goodness not, not that far so in this first position we play rook h8 stopping this pawn we realized that uh if we play something like king a1 after h8 rook takes rook takes b1 white can one win the, win that position with rook a8 followed by rook b8 we stop that c7 and now after king a1 if white has to sacrifice a pawn that same position trying to get our queen is not winning anymore because of this setup there's not a pawn on c6 anymore so we play king a1 and then rook c2 is a very tricky move because it forces us to control ourselves and not play b1 but find rook c8 which is the same idea we want to block this pawn uh, if he had promoted c8 and then we, we there was no way for our queen even though we have a queen against a rook there was no way to stop this pawn so we stop that pawn um if h8 then we just take and then we promote and once again we're getting to that winning endgame and now after rook c5 we finally promote and there's nothing to worry rook a5 uh, king b2 rook b5 king c2 this is winning because the rook is protecting the whole eighth rank okay Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions about this puzzle, if you have any questions in general about chess, please let me know. And as always, have a nice day.